All right, here is the example we didn't get to in class. So this is gonna be number 34. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna find the moment of the force F, which has a magnitude of 600 newtons, about point A. And here is point A up here. All right, so you can think of this as being like some sort of um, semicircular rod, something like that. It's got a cable attached at the end at B, and then that cable is attached again at C here. And then there's that tension in the rod, which we're calling F, okay? So we wanna find the moment of this force about point A. So what we wanna do, first of all, let's remember our equation for a moment is gonna be R cross F. I always use vectors for the 3D problems because I think it's easier. And we need to go ahead and get R, our position vector first. So to do that, let's write down our coordinates of these points. So point A, which is right here, that's right on the z-axis, so that'll be 0, 0, and 4. Point B is over here. All right, now this one's in the x-z plane, and we can tell that because it has this straight line drawn right above the x-axis, so that means there is no y component. So for that one, we're going to have 4, sine 45 for x, and then we've got 0 for y, and then 4 cosine 45 or the z component, or coordinate. All right, and I know that because this length right here from the origin to B is four meters, and then we've got this 45 degree angle. So you just split it up into its um, x and z components. Now C is right here, so this is where the cable's attached. So for that one, this is in the x-y plane, right? So there's no z component, and the x component will be six, y component will be 6. So we'll have 6, comma 6, 0. All right, so now we've got that. Let's go ahead and find our position vector. All right, now remember, when you're finding the moment, you can take the moment using any position vector that goes from the point you're interested to to any point on the line of action of the force. So in this case, we have two options, right? I could go R to R A to B and then A to C. Either one of those would work, okay? So let's, let's look at both of those. We'll do both of the moment calculations with those two vectors so you can see that they are the same. All right, so this would be our first one. Let's just call this R A B. And then here we're gonna have R A C, okay? And remember, you always want your position vector to start at the point of reference, right? So we're taking the moment about A, so I'm gonna say A is my point of reference. So my position vector should start at A and then go to the point on the line of action of the force, All right? So we have these two options here. Oops. All right, so our two options, we've got RAB and RAC. So let's find both of these. RAB, we're pointing to B, so we're gonna do coordinates of B minus the coordinates of A. And before we do that, let's simplify this. So four sine 45 is gonna be 2.83, we'll have zero, and then 2.83 again. Now, if we do our coordinates here, we're gonna have 2.83 minus zero the I component, zero minus zero for J, and then 2.83 minus four. And that's your K component. So then once you simplify this, you get 2.83 I minus 1.17 K, and that's in meters. All right, so this is option one. Option two, would be RAC. So this one we're pointing to C. So we're gonna do C minus A. So we'll have six minus zero, I, plus six minus zero, J, and then zero minus four, K. And then that obviously is six I plus six J minus four, K, and that's meters. All right, so these are your two options for the position vector.
Okay, now me just looking at this, I would like to use this top one because it has fewer components. Probably going to be less time to calculate the moment. But you could use either one and you're going to get the same thing. So now let's go ahead and find the force. All right, so this would be our step one. Step two is to find the force. And remember, the equation for the force vector is going to be the magnitude, which is 600 times the unit vector of the unit of the force. So let's go ahead and find this unit vector. Now the unit vector, remember, is R over the magnitude of R. Okay, and the line is going from B to C right here, and we're pointing from B to C. All right, so I need to get a position vector going from B to C and then divide it by that magnitude. All right, so let's do that. So pointing at C, so we're gonna do C minus B. So we'll have six minus 2.83. That's your I component. And we'll have six minus zero. And then uh, zero minus 2.83. And that's your K. And then we need to put that over the magnitude of this position vector we just found. All right. So this number right here, if you simplify this, this is going to be 3.17. And let's make a note on that. All right, so that right there is 3.17. So square that, and then we're going to have plus 6 squared plus the negative 2.83 squared. All right, so then if we simplify the unit vector, we'll have a unit vector of 0.431i plus 0.816j minus 0.385k. Multiply that by the 600, that'll give you your force vector. So it's 258.69i plus 489.64j and then minus 230.95k and that's newtons. So now we're ready to do the cross products. All right, I've got my position vector, I've got a force vector, now I can do r cross f. And then that's going to give me my moment about A. So this will be step three. All right, so let's do RAB first. And then after that, we'll use RAC. And you'll see you get the same thing. Okay. And for this first time that we go through, I'm going to actually go through and do the cross product basically using the right hand rule. And then when we use the second one, we'll use the determinant, just so you have the two different methods. All right, so let's write out R, A, B. All right, so the 2.83i minus 1.17k. We're gonna cross that with this force vector. Right there, and then we do the cross product. All right, so remember when you have I cross I or J cross J or K cross K, those go to zero because those are parallel vectors. And remember for a cross product, what you're looking for are two vectors that form a plane. And then when you do the cross product, you get the vector that's parallel or not parallel, perpendicular to that plane. Okay, so if we have two parallel vectors, those are not forming a plane. So when we do I cross I, for example, it's going to go to zero. So I don't really need to worry about doing the cross product with those like unit vectors. So let's go ahead and we'll start with 2.83i cross with 489.64j. All right, so you're going to multiply those numbers together and then you do i cross j. And then i cross j, well that is k. All right, so that's going to go to k. And then now let's do the 2.83i cross with a negative 230.95k. 
right? So you multiply the values like that. And then we're going to have I cross K. And then I cross K, if we do the uh, right hand rule, that's going to be negative J, right? And that's kind of hard to show you on this paper, but, but this, if this is X and Z is going out of the page or into the page. If we're going to K, right, we'd have this. And so we're going to have a negative J. All right, so we got that. And then we're done with this one. So now let's go ahead and do this term here. So we need negative 1.17K cross with the 258.69I. All right, and then we got k cross i. Now k cross i, that's going to give us a positive j. All right, so if we look at the right hand rule, you align your fingers with the right hand with the k axis, and then we're going to curl them towards the x axis. The thumb tells you if it's positive or negative. All right, so we start here because that's z. Curl this way, and think of y is coming out of the page. So we're going to get that positive. Y or J. All right, so that goes to J. And then last one we need to do will be negative 1.17 K cross with the 489 J. All right, so that'll be K cross J. And then K cross J, you start here for K, curl this way for J, your thumb's going this way, so that would be negative i. Okay, so now we've got that. And we've got these two j components here, so you can group those up. So what we're going to end up with is 572.8 ai plus 350.92j plus 1385.68k. All right, and again, this J component here, that's this one added with this one here, or that just combined them together. But this would be your moment about point A. And the units here, we've got newtons for force. The length is in meters, so we'd have newton meters. All right. So this is our moment about the x-axis. This is our moment about y. This is our moment about z. So you can tell there's a lot more moment about the z-axis compared to these other two. All right. And then the positives mean that they're all rotating counterclockwise to those axes. OK, so that was using that position vector. Now let's use the other one. All right, so now let's use RAC. But this time we'll use the determinant. All right, so let's write it on the back here. So now what we're going to do is use the determinant. So I, J, K across the top. Next row will be the components of your position vector. Again, we're using R, A, C. So I'm going to have 6, 6, negative 4, because that's what we had for R, A, C. And then third row will be your components for F. So 258.69. 489.64 and then negative 230.95. All right, and then you just do the determinant. So remember for the determinant, what you want to do, you want to circle the first element and then the row and column that intersect here, you kind of cancel them out and get rid of them. And then you focus on what's left. So that means we're going to get rid of this column, top row. And then we're going to have a two by two determinant left. Okay, so to solve that two by two determinant, we're gonna cross multiply. So six times the negative 230, and then minus negative four times 489. All right, so let's write that down. So there's the six times the negative 230. We're gonna have minus negative four times 489.64. And on this one, we canceled out i, right? So this is the i term. 
Next, for the second term, you're always going to put a negative here every time. So put that negative there. And for this one, imagine circling J and then canceling out the row and column that intersect there. So that means we're going to get rid of the second column, top row. And then you cross multiply what's left. Okay, so we're going to have 6 times negative 230. And then subtract the negative 4 times 258. And this one is the J term. All right, and then finally, we're here. Imagine canceling out the row and column that intersect at K. So that means we're getting rid of the last column, top row. And then we're going to cross multiply these two and then these two. And this one will be plus. So we'll have 6 times 489.64 minus 6 times 258.69. And that's your K component. And there it is. Now you just have to simplify. And if you simplify, you will notice you get pretty much exactly what we had before. All right, now my rounding is a little different on this one. So here I had 572.86. All right, if you carry out all the digits, though, you should get the same thing. That was the I component. J component will be 350.94. And then the last component will be 1385.7, and that's K, and that's Newton meters. All right. So again, same values, same signs. Um, so you get the same thing. Okay, but you can use either one of those position vectors to do it. All right, so that's how you solve that one. All right, so I got for y'all this time, so I will see y'all next time. Bye, guys.